Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, you are tuned in to the eBay Conspiracy Hour with your host. Hey Fro! Hey guys, um, I wasn't gonna make a video tonight. That's an inside joke for a uh, few people out there who's watching. But, uh, Patricia, thank you very much for sending me a article that I feel is worth talking about and yeah let's just get right into it I, i've got another email from a, a viewer that i want to share with you guys and get some get some uh, opinions and you know kind of start some dialogue going i've got a zillion tabs open on my computer and i do not like to keep tabs open on my computer just like i like to keep my email inbox clean i am ocd like that so let's get right into it. Now, I haven't read all of this article, so I'm going to be doing some stopping and some starting and kind of trying to give you guys what I think is the the, uh, the gist of it. Uh, maybe add some inf add some thoughts of my own on it. Instead of trying to prepare everything, I kind of just want to get this out there. And, uh, you know, I've got questions and, you know, there's people out there who watch the channel, who are uh, far more intelligent than I am, and maybe they have some insights or, or, or whatnot. So uh, with that being said, let's just get right into it. Uh, Value Added Resource put out an article today, and I will link to it. And it's not a website that I'm very familiar with, but a lot of people have been talking about it lately. And the title is eBay Strategy Faces Uncertain Future Amid Potential Leadership Shakeup. And essentially, uh, Stephanie J has reportedly resigned following mass layoffs, cost cutting pressure, and uncertain Q4 2023 financial results, according to a source familiar with the matter. Apparently, this announcement was made internally at the end of last month in January. And she has been with eBay since 2021. In addition to her role of leading strategy and operations, she also sat on the advisory panel of eBay's venture capital investing arm, eBay Ventures. Let's see here. Um, she kicked off the two-day eBay annual seller conferences in September with a keynote on reinventing the future of e-commerce for enthusiasts touting eBay's 132 million active buyers and laying out her strategy vision for the marketplace. So she's touting the 132 million base, but she's not really pointing out that we had 163 million buyers in Q1 of 2021. Losing one sixth of your buyer base and doing nothing, just sitting back, not advertising, trying to pass that buck on to sellers. Again, we have finite margins and Google offsite ads does not work. They, you know, enough of us have tested it in December, uh, and it absolutely, I mean, it it might work for 1% of the people out there, but it, it, it does not work. And then Jamie, in a memo of, to the employees about the layoffs, this is from the article, uh, value added resource, they says that basically Jamie took very little responsibility for this for the situation eBay finds itself in. And then uh, it shows a quote from Jamie and says, we are on the path to building a stronger eBay for the future, one that is growing and resilient in the face of that challenge. Our strategy is the right one, but there is more we can do to ensure our success. Our strategy is the right one is, is a very arrogant thing to say when let's take a look at the stock let's take a look at the stock price uh since 2021 uh ebay stock was around 52 on its way to peaking at 77 
and very little was done. All of those gains, it had nothing to do with what eBay was doing. That was all COVID gains. And so peaking at 77, and now we sit at 42 and a half with a, with a stock price, which does not look like it has any reason to go up anytime soon. Now, comparison, Amazon. Q1 2021, right now 155. Now it sits at 175. It did have a big dip, but it's also had a big rebound. Um, but the fact that it's positive speaks volumes. I, I, I will say, given how similar these charts do look to some degree, it is a testament to the challenges that e-commerce, that, that space has faced in general, which some of that has to do with the economy. And then let's just take a look at uh, Shopify. It was at 21. No, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. In 2021 Q1, it was right around 120-ish. It's at 90. Uh, that stock was decimated uh, in 2022. It just had a massive collapse. Now, a lot of analysts are super, super high on Shopify right now. I'm not convinced when I look at this stock chart uh, it just seems like every time an article shows up in my feed, they're just so bullish on Shopify. Uh, and I, I, like I said, the, the chart does not, to me, suggest an Etsy. Pff, Etsy has been decimated. It was at like 185-ish. Uh, I'm looking at weekly charts, and so the, you know, the numbers get a little small, and I mean, it sits at 76 right now. Um, so to sit there and say that our strategy is the right one, I... I, I don't see how you can sit there and, and, and make that statement. And given what the stock price is doing, given what the website is doing, like, like as sellers, we are the heartbeat of, um, of, of eBay. We know what's going on in terms of because of our sales. And as a community, we're seeing more and more and we're hearing more and more about like, we just don't know like what, in the world is the strategy that eBay is like, why does it seem like everything they're doing is the exact opposite of what you want to do to actually build and sustain a company, a platform for the long term? What exactly is eBay doing? Jack and I were taught, we had a conversation today, uh, like we do pretty much every day talking about the, the BS that's going on. eBay is sitting there, they're letting sellers leave. Uh, the other day I was, I, I, my last video, I was talking about some of the bigger YouTubers slash eBay resellers who were leaving. J-Ride was another one. I knew there was another one. I recently watched a video of his and he was kind of talking about his strategy going forward. I think he said he had about 2000 items in his store at his peak uh, I want to say he had about 2,800. Now, when he had 2,800, or as he was building to 2,800, uh, he said that his goal and his plan at that time, I don't know how many months ago that was, he wanted to build his store up to about 75 listings, or maybe a little bit more, give or take, if I'm remembering correctly. Now, he is uh, basically advertising, you know, talking about how, how cross-listing is the way now. Uh, you know, he's cross-listing mar he's cross -listing to Whatnot, Posh, and Mercari. And his plan now is to get his eBay store down to a thousand listings. I mean, I don't know how that is something that eBay would, would be happy about. Um, so eBay is basically just letting, continually letting people leave, uh, letting people cross list and they're annoying the ones that stay, you know, people, readers, v uh, viewers of the channel, they will criticize me and say, oh, is this all you do is complain about eBay? Well, maybe, maybe if eBay didn't give me something to complain about or, you know, then yeah, I, I would be making other content. But sadly to say, they do 
they're doing just about everything wrong. And it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. And, and, and I feel, I mean, I've got people continually like sending me things and, and, and I almost feel like there's like an obligation here to, to get this information out. And, you know, maybe, you know, I know people will sit, sit there and they say, oh, no one's going to listen to that bearded guy. Somebody said the, the other day in a comment and I'm like, oh, I'm that bearded guy now. And uh, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, but like, like Jack said, <clears throat> with, with rising fees, with slow sales or no sales, with, um, you know, promoted listings continuing to rise and, and, and with us sitting here feeling like we have to raise our promoted listings just to make sales, which it doesn't actually work that way. We can up our promoted listings, but we're not getting sales back. We're not getting the sales back we lost. It, it's not even working that way. At some point, it might just be better to go get a job at McDonald's. Jack's words. And to some, to some <laughs> degree, like that actually almost makes sense if eBay is gonna like throttle people's sales back enough that, uh, that you know, you know, we are all entrepreneurs. All of us who are on eBay, we're all, we're all entrepreneurs. We have a mindset, even if you're part-time, you could be doing something else with your part-time, your, your spare time. You could, you could be watching TV, you could be relaxing, you could be do, picking up a hobby and doing whatever, or spending time with friends. You don't have to be listing things on eBay to sell. That is an entrepreneurial spirit. eBay, they're killing the entrepreneurial spirit. In, a, in, a, in, a, in an environment where they should be, eBay should be embracing entrepreneurs, small business owners. Uh, you know, the, the, the whole, all those featured, uh, you know, entrepreneurs that they that they that they have and and then they bring these people up at ebay open and it's all rah rah but but they don't actually answer any of the hard questions they don't actually communicate anything that's that that needs to be communicated to sellers what do they want ebay how about you tell us what you want that way we can go and we can do it or we can not do it instead of making us like try to do all this guesswork play all these games um everything to some degree is a little bit of a mirage. Like metrics almost don't even matter anymore. When you see some of these big, massive, uh, I, I'm drawing a blank on, on, like there's stores out there that have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of negative feedback and bad buyer experiences. And yet they are continued to be allowed to be selling on, plat on, on the platform, potentially alienating, uh, you know, all those buyers, all those buyers who have negative experiences, it only takes one negative experience for a buyer to decide, I don't want to shop on eBay anymore. Um, I don't, I don't hate eBay. I, I don't like the management. I don't, I, I don't even, it's not even that I don't like the management. I don't like what they're doing. And, um, and I'm not the only one. Because I actually called into eBay, uh, and, and I'll share the details of that conversation when uh, I know more information. But I had a great phone call. Like, the guy, uh, you know, he was just, he was super helpful. He was su super wanting to, to help. But I get this sense that they just, their hands are completely tied. And, um, yeah, there was a really funny story that happened, but I, I, I don't really want to say what happened. And I don't really know the end result, whether or not he'll actually be able to help me. I'm probably going to have to call back in in a week to see. But uh, it has to do with the, um, the case that was opened against me because the item wasn't received. And then the day... I waited until the day uh, that I could, and then I had to refund him. And then the very next day, the item got there. Uh, it has to do with that case. I still haven't received payment from the buyer. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure something out with eBay. And uh, actually, let me ask you guys this. Because I would, the, the basically, this representative told me something that contradicts what I thought the best 
way to handle something is. So let me ask you guys how you how you handle this. So when you have somebody, you know, who opened up a case, and I actually had that happen to me today. Another person opened a case saying something didn't receive. I got his email at like eight in the morning, and then um, I was still sleeping. And then when I went to check it, it actually, uh, the, the, the tracking was stuck for like five days, but then it, it updated today. So the way I look at it is it's still on track. Uh, I don't really need to do anything with that. But when you have a case open against you and the, 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 the tracking is obviously, let's say it hasn't been updated for like two weeks. Somebody opens a case, with two, uh, the item not received, you've got four days to figure out what to do. I've always been under the impression that I have to refund them before that case goes to eBay arbitration, let's just call it, before eBay gets involved and then has to decide what's going on. Because I was always under the impression that when you do that, when you when you let it go to eBay, that you have an, you have you run the risk of eBay saying, well, you didn't resolve this. The item is lost and you're responsible, so you need to refund them. I was always under the impression if you did that, that you would get a ding on your account. That's why I've just always refunded him because he, he, you know, he didn't, he didn't receive it. So I just thought we were always on the hook that way. This eBay representative told me that he sees this all the time and he's, he actually said he's seeing it a lot lately that you're, you should let it go to eBay. Let them decide what to do. How do you guys handle that? Let me know because what he told me is in direct uh, contradiction to how I've always understood it. I've always taken care of it before. I've only ever let it go to e uh, eBay arbitration one time and that's because they told me to do that. And I can't even remember the the specifics of that instance, but I did, uh, I, I talked about it on this channel when it was happening because it was interesting content. So getting back to Stephanie J. Uh, I'm on her LinkedIn page right now. So what what she does, she, according to this, she's, she leads eBay's strategy corporate development and eBay ventures, business operations, uh, analytics and communication teams. In her role, she is responsible for overseeing the company's data and insights for day-to-day -day operations along with this long-term strategy and corporate storytelling. Stephanie possesses more than two decades of experience in global strategy, corporate development, and general manager. Uh, prior to eBay, she served as the vice president and general manager of Walmart Media Group, the in-store and digital advertising business. She also led corporate development for, stra and stra for corporate development and strategy for Walmart e-commerce, including its investments in China's JD.com. I remember that stock get going from like, I don't even know if it's still around. I remember that stock getting hammered. Oh, well, I'm not going to look at that right now. I just closed my, my browser with my stock stuff. Um, sorry, I talk to myself all the time. Uh, and strategic partnerships with Google, Uber, and Lyft. So she's got a big role. Now, I'm curious either A, does she see the right, like I saw somebody uh, do a pretty comical tweet uh, and I can't remember where it was, but basically the tweet was uh, something along the lines of, does Stephanie J see the writing on the wall and does she think it's, you know, probably not good to have, you know, be affiliated with eBay? Uh, or is she gonna be a scapegoat for this whole, for this, you know, the, all right, I did find that tweet from Unsuck eBay. It says, deep thoughts with eBay finally under scrutiny by the DOJ and others. Certain senior eBay execs, like say the chief strategy officer must feel like eBay may be a career stomping blight on their CV LinkedIn profile. And uh, you know, it, it's gonna remain to be seen whether, well, you know, whether 
again, this is going to be a scapegoat or if this is something that she's preemptively trying to do just, you know, because she sees the writing on the wall. Um, maybe her strategic vision of, of what she thought, how she thought she could contribute to eBay is not panning out. Uh, but it's definitely newsworthy. Now, um, now we just need, we need the big one. We need, you know, we all want Jamie to retire, uh, walk off with his golden parachute, which if you actually think about it, he's in a no risk situation right now. He's going to make, he's going to get, you know, 50 plus million in severance whether he does a good job or a bad job. And the longer that he's there, the more he's going to make. And doesn't it feel like everything they're doing right now or everything eBay's doing right now is desperate? It's, 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 a de they're, it's all desperation moves. To There's no long-term thinking that, that we can see, we as sellers can see. Uh, and there's no long-term... Uh, growth strategy that Wall Street can see. And Wall Street is far more smarter than you and I watching this. And collectively, uh, right now, Walmart, Walmart, Wall Street is, they're not, they don't have a lot of confidence in what eBay is doing. They haven't had a lot of confidence uh, over the last three years as the stock price has depreciated. And it just feels like everything that they're doing from the cash grabs, the constant cash grabs uh, for sellers, the the no average, they're, they're basically, they're, they're, they're reading out of the playbook how to dismantle a company. Because if you think about it, everything that they're doing, it all makes sense if you want to dismantle a company or you want to drive the stock price lower for maybe maybe to have it bought out. All, all of it makes sense, but if you if you want to build a company and a platform that has brand recognition, that has been around for twenty five plus years, that should be a stable, uh, you know, a, a stable company. If you want to build that for you know the next couple years and into the next you know the next decade or, or so. The things that they are doing right now make make zero sense. All right, I want to switch gears and I want to share with you an email I got today from a viewer who will remain nameless. Uh, he had asked for anonymity and uh, he, he told me that he has two eBay stores, one with 20,000 items on it and, and one with... Uh, uh, 5,000. I'm not going to discuss the ones in everything size category and the other one is, is, is it's uh, it's specific. Um, so he said that, uh, he was, he was having success, uh, with his, with his large store up until about 2022. And then he decided to diversify. Uh, and then, and things were going pretty good until, April 1st, when everything went to hell in a handbasket. And he said that, uh, you know, he, the only thing that helped him was the reset. And, and, and I'm, I'm kind of guessing that the reason he's probably reaching out is, uh, you know, he had these thoughts and, you know, he just couldn't take it anymore because of, of the current climate and the current environment that, that we are in. So this, this is the gist of his, uh, this is what he says. He says, Facebook and Instagram, et cetera. Social media have apps that look at every single aspect of your online activities. That is how they make their money. Old school was Google ads. New school is to see exactly what you do online and manipulate you to do things. It's scary and it works. They make billions. I say all this because I think that eBay, and this is all speculative, but I think there's a high probability that this is actually more accurate than less accurate. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if this spurs any more conversation, any more thoughts that, that other people have. 
Um, I say all that because I think that eBay saw that their ad revenue to sellers made more money, even, well, made more, didn't make more money, but it, it, but the, the percentile of growth was greater than it was on the actual items. You know, eBay's bread and butter is the selling of products, but their largest percentage gain was the was in the division of uh, promoted listings. So they said that uh, even though they saw their ad revenue sellers made more money, even though their new subscribers went down, they decided to flip the script and look look at their app and pull a Facebook. Follow me here. They take us resellers and they see that we wake up and we click the seller hub. We then send our offers and then we check it again in 10 minutes. They throttle, so they throttle your sales and they see how long it takes you to up your ad revenue. I thought this was particularly um, accurate because I woke up, I checked my seller hub, I sent my offers, and then I checked my email. And I'm and as I'm reading this, I'm like, are you watching me? <laughs> and then I thought, you know what? This is actually probably what the majority of you guys do out there. If they do that to 100 million sellers, they will be able to ma manipulate us on a mass scale. I mean, this is nothing that we haven't already, uh, you know, theorized. But the only way to do this is to throttle everyone and trickle in sales to keep the carrot in front of the turtle. Do turtles eat carrots? I think maybe he meant rabbit. Um... Sorry, just kind of trying to put a little humor in this situation. So it doesn't matter how hard you try, you are going to be bottled into a subset that they think that they can manipulate a certain way and, and that you will get all the same results until you post more or you up your ad revenue. Thoughts? I mean, if ad revenue from current sellers is, their, is, is on, their only form of growth, their biggest avenue of growth, then they owe it to their stockholders, shareholders, to pull a Facebook and manipulate us on a cellular level. It is proven, it is a proven method that works. We are all just teenage girls and sells are likes. I love that line. It is so accurate. I mean, no offense to teenage girls. I'm sure teenage boys are, are actually, I know teenage boys are the same way. Uh, I have a, one of, one of Maria and I's good friends has a, has a, a young boy who's on TikTok. And when I had mentioned to him that I was starting a YouTube channel, he was all too quick to be like, oh, I've got TikTok and I've got this many subscribers. So he look, he looks at my, my, my piddly, you know, 2000 subscribers and he, he laughs at it, but it's true, right? It's like every time we make a sale, it's like to them, it's like when they get, maybe it's not one like, but maybe it's when they get, you know, a hundred likes. Thoughts? Oh wait, I've already read that. This is why the store reset boost was kiboshed. That was a huge monkey wrench in their plans of putting every reseller into a subset to manipulate them. You cannot be into a calculatable subset if you are gaming the system. So they changed the system to put all resellers back in their little cubby holes the way the carrot on the stick can work with the rest of the minions. I mean, it's pretty interesting, right? pretty interesting theory uh you know and and while like i i called i called primo today because you know i wanted to talk to him about this and get his thoughts because he's in an interesting uh situation where he doesn't promote and he does the the nuclear reset and you know he showed me his chart and how it just continue it's just going well i mean he's he's shown it uh, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. Well, you can see it on his on his channel, but it's basically his traffic is going down. I don't want to show it without without approval, but um, it's impossible for the data to 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 show like that without manipulation of some some sort. It's impossible. That's just not how it happens. Now, this got me thinking. A couple thoughts and um, it got me thinking eBay seems to not have a problem 
with buyers, sellers leaving and sellers cross-listing. And then I, I got to thinking about how other sites like Posh are, you know, I believe, I believe they're doing something along the, uh, the like they're doing something similar to promoted listings as well. Uh, you know, it probably, I don't know, I don't know if Macari does, uh, but, you know, I'm seeing promoted, you know, YouTube is starting to do some sort of promoted, you know, promote your videos. And it seems to be a trend among a lot of these. It's basically along the, it's the it's It's, it's coming back to the enshittification of e-commerce platforms, um, ads on Netflix and Amazon are basically the equivalent of promoted listings. It's just another way to make revenue from, you know, some sort of promoting something. And maybe eBay just feels like, you know what, you guys can leave, but you're basically walk walking into a trap over there as well. And maybe it's not there now, but it's going to be there. Which got me thinking about something else. And I've talked about this in the past, and I've, I think I'm coming back around to it, that I think having your own site is the only insurance policy that, that we can have right now. And it sucks. I don't really want to have to create my own site. I don't want to... Uh, I just don't want to have to do that. I don't want to have to, but I feel like having my own site, because right now, for example, when I do, when I do local sales, I have a link tree that I, that I show people, but I feel like it overwhelms them. I feel like there's just too much going on and they end up not doing anything. And, you know, you give the consumer too many choices and they don't do anything. I feel like if I had my own website where my items are separated by nice categories that, you know, if somebody buys a, a, a piece of art off of me, they can go to my art section of my website. Now I can, and I can also have the links to all the areas that I sell on my own website, but I think having my own home base like that is is gonna be so important you know for example for also when i sell when i sell things on ebay you know give somebody one link with my contact information on there and uh yeah i i i'm almost convinced that the whole promoted listings things that we're seeing on ebay we're going to be seeing it like we're already seeing it on other platforms and i think it's only going to get worse to be honest with you and I get it. I get, I get why companies are doing it. But what I don't get, coming back to eBay, is it doesn't even work. The whole promote of this things thing, it doesn't even work. You can't even promote high enough to, to make back what you're losing in, by being throttled, right? Like, Jack and I were talking about how... You know, the whole enshittification thing is, is, is basically how eBay knows resellers who have X amount of listings are, are, right, are right now trapped. Our listings are in e-commerce hell right now. They're, they're, they're oh no, e-commerce purgatory. And, well, some, some, some people would say hell. But... If you wanted to do a fire sale because you're just like, I've had enough, I'm done, I don't want to, I don't want to be on eBay right anymore. And believe you me, I think, I, I feel like that sometimes, even though I'm, I, I'm still listing on, I'm still listing on eBay. I, I, I'm just, I'm very resentful for what's going on. You, you couldn't tell, right? But even if you wanted to have a fire sale, you couldn't. Think about that. I used to think... I used to think years ago that I'm going to build up my eBay store. You know, I'm making this much now. I double my listings. I'm going to make this. I'm going to double my earnings. 
And then I used to think in the back of my head that if anything ever happened and I needed to raise some funds, well, I would just run a, a significant markdown sale and it would be so easy to just generate money. But you think about it. Like, you, you can't even do that now. So, uh, own site, other side. So, so those are those are two thoughts that I had in reaction to this article that was sent to me. And then the third one was, it got me thinking about uh, some of the people, some of you guys out there who don't promote. Uh, Nash comes to mind. Uh, I'm pretty sure Benny, you don't promote. Um, and I mean no promotions. I, oh, Kevin, uh, Stoic Reseller, uh, he doesn't promote. And it just got me thinking that maybe you guys are right. I mean, maybe there's something about not by not, if, if you opt out of the system, let's just call it the matrix because that's what it is. And, you know, because right now we're all taking, I can't even remember what pill it is. Basically the pill that you're not in, you, you know, you, you, you choose to be in the matrix. If, 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 you're, if you're doing promoted listings, and I'm included in that, I'm taking that pill right now. But if you want to take the other pill, get out. You're going to be, you're going to be um, punished for a while. But then maybe after a while, there's just nothing they can do, and 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 you're just you're just out you're out of the algorithmic games, and you're you're I, I don't know this is just me thinking, but I feel like, and I know it I know it will never happen. There's no way it would ever happen, um, but I I feel like there needs to be. A, some sort of promoted listings boycott because that's the only and again I'm not proposing it because I still promote I I I I can't afford to not promote right now but I'm I see a time where I'm gonna definitely test this strategy hopefully over the next couple months uh, I'm gonna pull the plug on Maria's store and, and, and try, I'm going to try to hold out for at least three months, maybe more, and kind of see what happens. But, and maybe it's not a full, maybe a, a full promoted listings boycott, like, site-wide. Again, it will never happen. It needs to happen. It's the only, maybe, like, a scale back to the minimum or, or like, like a more, you know, a, a reduction. I don't know. That's... Like, if you think, like, remember when COVID happened? This is why a promoted listing boycott would never happen. When COVID happened, if everybody just stayed in their house for 10 days and never went out, we could have been, we could have been done with it. Or, 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 you know, 15 days just for safety. Everyone just stayed in their, their houses and, and didn't go out. Then we would have been done with COVID in, in, in far shorter time than we really did. If everybody just stopped doing promoted listings for a month, then there's nothing that eBay could do. Like the search would have to just show organic and and it's like somehow they've they've literally they've literally tricked us into giving them more money out of fear. Oh, so here's the other thing. So coming back to this coming back to this concept of uh, you know, data observation. When I was talking with Primo tonight, I was like, you know, think about all the information that they have when it comes to observing what we are doing. You know, we know Am Amazon basically openly admits that they, they, they track and they watch everything that buyers and sellers do. So, I mean, this, this, this makes complete sense. But think about it. Think how powerful this information is. And, uh, you know, basically... And, and this is not, this is the example that I gave to Primo tonight when I was talking to him. Think about if eBay said, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to throttle back every single seller in the state of Minnesota. We're going to throttle back their sales 50%. And 
and then we're going to wait and then we're going to watch and we're going to wait and we're going to see how long it takes for sellers to up their promoted listings. So let's just, it's just an experiment. It's all of, all of what eBay is doing is a social experiment that I don't particularly like being a guinea pig. I just want to sell stuff, right? Remember the good old days, two, three, four years ago, where you could just go about your day, do your business, source, list, sell, field customer service, ship, rinse, repeat. This is all I want to do. I don't want to be making these videos. So they watch and they wait and they're like, okay, so, you know, we, we throttled them on Monday by Thursday morning, 65% of the people have upped their promoted listings, 2%, 35% have upped them three. Well, that's hundred percent, but think about how powerful that information is. And then they just go and then they do another state. I mean, obviously, Primo's like it would probably be by category, which I agree, it probably would be by category. But I'm just, I'm just saying, like, for the sake of a simple visual example, it would be so easy to just throttle, observe, and then observe the reactions. And then just apply this again and again in other categories or other, you know, how, however they want to do it. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Uh, I, I want to, I think there was a comment I wanted to read and then I wanted to talk about something that Darth and I were talking about. All right, so Darth had did Darth Thrifter, uh, great channel. If you are unfamiliar with that, I strongly suggest checking him out. He's very, very real, uh, very funny, uh, and and an enthusiastic reseller. But he's he's um, he's feeling it right now, as are many many of us, and it's just it's it's not fun really. So anyhow, he he made a comment. So this is what Dar this is this is the Darth said. He said, "So Jeff, I noticed when your listings are unpromoted, it says promote it. It says quotes promote it, boost your item to help it sell faster." End quote. So here is my thought. Number one, this is at the very least a very badly worded sales pitch, as it signifies your item will sell faster by helping it if you pay more. Number two, this could be false advertising, intentionally or unintentionally. They would have to prove this claim, right? Number three, if, if they have to prove this claim, wouldn't they have to be able to control the result? I don't know. They probably have all the lawyers approve everything anyway, anyways. It was just a thought. And, and it's, it's, it's a good thought. I mean, boost your item, promote it. B boost your item to help it sell faster. They shouldn't say that it, that it will sell faster. They, they, they should say, by promoting it, you may gain. This is, this is how they should have worded it. By promoting it, you may gain additional visibility. The problem with that is, and we've talked about this ad nauseum, is where what are the where are these impressions coming from? We all know that they're most likely worthless because they're not telling us. If they're not telling us where where they're promoting it, uh, I'm a little you know my 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 radar. My spidey sense goes off. And again, if every single person on the platform is promoting at 10%, how are you getting any additional exposure? And that that is the fallacy of promoted listings. It, it is it is a it is a pyramid scheme in the nature that it requires it it doesn't it requires more money more people putting more money in to get additional exposure. So if everyone's promoting at 
10%, it takes one more person to say, I'm going to promote at 11%. And then as soon as that happens, the snowball effect of that, more money coming in, and you know, you're know you get, you're getting that, that promoted listings is, in my opinion, the most insidification aspect of eBay right now. We're getting less for like, we're, we're making less for doing the same thing. eBay is making more for doing nothing. And there's no end in sight. There's no, like you, there, there's no amount of promoting that you can do that you can get back your sales. So, and again, tonight I was, I was searching some th stuff on eBay and I was just getting complete garbage results like I just don't know how the buyer experience I don't know how it can be good right now either um so staying on in shitification I thought this was a brilliant comment that somebody left uh, not somebody uh the sequel vintage says in shit in is basically the internet version of dating someone they're low-key and everything you could ask for and then suddenly they get famous for being an influencer. Then their whole personality changes. They want to break up with you, but you're still paying their rent. So they can't leave until they find a sucker who offers more to jump ship to. Until then, you just get treated like dookie. Brilliant. It's brilliant. I mean, that is, that is what's going on with eBay in a nutshell. I mean, they didn't get famous. But somebody came on board at the highest management position and has these lofty goals that they think that they can come in and implement. And uh, they think that, uh, the, you know, the whole, per the whole personality of eBay has changed. They think they, they it is so arrogant to, to just assume that we're going to give away 50% of our earnings to eBay as if there's nowhere else to sell items on, on in the world. Two more little things that I found that I thought was interesting tonight uh, in doing some research. Uh, I found something on Reddit. Um, this is from somebody who works at eBay who, well, I'll, so... L-E-D-E-L-E -E -L -E Destroyer 22 says eBay foot soldier here. I work as an eBay authentic uh, authenticator for one of the authenticity guarantee programs, or at least I do for now. This is back in, this is 27 days ago. We'll spill what I know here. All last year, our warehouse did not hire a single person with countless people leaving so obviously we were starting to think something was coming. No updates for holidays, so we just pushed through it. Then today, as we are all about to finish the day, they call us up for a meeting and they just sent us home with no real information. Just said, go home. We started late tomorrow. Don't worry about what's on the line and we'll have lunch for y'all tomorrow. I don't know if I still have a job. Or if I do, I don't know what's about to change. The, that email that got sent out, yeah, it only got sent out to our work emails, which anyone that's not a supervisor or above has access to. So I'm finding out because I read stuff like the same with some coworkers' friends. And then he says some not so nice things about eBay that I'm not gonna read. Update. So this is this is the same this is same day. Uh, update. Got an email for a Zoom meeting where I will most likely lose my job. Smiley face. Uh, and then the same day he said, updated again, not a corporate job, just a warehouse worker losing it due to corporate. Uh, the same day he goes, we'll give two more updates. One now, one tomorrow after my Zoom meeting. Made a group chat with most of my coworkers, venting, joking, seeing what the next move is. The first year we were with eBay, we were so profitable. We got a bonus on top of our yearly bonus. And it's crazy to think that they've reported profit again, but decided to lay off the, their employees in the most scummy, cowardly way. Uh, but it's not failing. It's It's been profitable in the years that I've had it. 
Probably the last update, but me as well and many coworkers did get fired. That Zoom meeting was exactly for us. And then he says, also want to say a quick uh, thank you for all your kind words. I truly appreciate it. I'm not really that familiar with Reddit. Uh, I'm only seeing his comments. I'm not see because he's obviously talking back and forth with other people. Uh, but like when when he when he talks about how there were so many people quitting, that makes sense with and I can't remember which YouTuber reseller was talking about it, how he had sent something to the authentic authenticity program. Uh, he sold something and then it was delayed and then he got a di like the buyer left I can't remember if it's a neutral or a negative feedback uh, and it was all eBay's fault that makes like that makes sense when when you know obviously they were understaffed and that's the reason why that was taking so long so that totally makes sense uh, the other thing that I wanted to share with you that Jack came across that I could not believe where is it did i close that window made the mistake of checking my email nash i see you just sent me another another thing to watch on jeff bezos i'll have to watch that later tonight uh but anyhow uh back this so this was in 2015 ebay used to have a 28 port Four percent stake in Craigslist. Did you guys know that? Um, they, they, like, there was some. Like, I, I was blown away by that. I was like, no, you know, because I use Craigslist, and 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 I was just like, now when we were trying to figure this out, and Jack was looking into it, he he thought maybe, or I thought maybe it was like now, and then we were like, oh, this is years ago. They don't own any. They don't own any more stake in Craigslist. Um anymore but there was there were like some some lawsuits uh, and, and some things going on uh but i was just like oh. you know in my mind i'm just like no they're like ebay i'm in my mind i'm like ebay's everywhere that i am i thought that i thought that was kind of funny and um and for the and for those of you who are still here um i just want to say that there was uh there was a second part to my dad's story that I totally forgot because Maria was like, and did you tell them about, and I was like, oh, I forgot. And, and quickly, apparently the cat had brought in a bunny. Uh, my dad was telling me a, a, a completely different time. And I was like, and, and apparently the bunny got into a, um, like a, like a, a cubby hole or something. And my, my dad was saying how he literally had to like, use a saw or something to cut a hole into it because the the he couldn't get his hand in the thing uh no bunnies were harmed in this he 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 got it let it outside but i was just like oh my gosh dad i'm like you're just your cat just keeps bringing things in the house uh but it was far funnier when he told it but so yeah so that's two animals that that cat of his has brought in so anyhow guys if you're still here uh, i do appreciate it uh, I believe this is under an hour this time, and um, yeah, so if you're still here, kindly, you know, do do the things that uh, make this video be seen, uh, because uh, I, I do feel that it, that it, it is important, uh, important information out there. So we'll talk to you guys soon. Peace and blessings to you guys. Happy, it feels like a Sunday night, but I know it's a Monday night. Uh, I am going to be on Primo's uh channel on wednesday but we have to keep it to an hour because i have a dentist appointment that day so we'll talk to you guys soon take care